the scene. And even when you get in areas like Appalachia and, and mining areas, automation is taking over a lot of those jobs. What Trump is saying about creating jobs, those jobs aren't coming back. They are now being dealt with with technology. You know, you're absolutely right. I think there are statistics showing that the manufacturing sector in this country over the last 20 or 30 years makes about twice as many goods as it used to with about 30 percent fewer people. If you go to a, a, an auto plant, you go to a port, uh, they're doing all the things they're doing, but there are no people there. There are people running the machines. Uh, and so we need to train people to do that. And you're right, because those coal jobs... Uh, aren't coming back, and we need to figure out a way to train people for those jobs of the 21st century, whether it's, it's solar power, whether it's in computer coding, whether it's in healthcare. Yeah, it's your and, and there seems to be, when you look at the Department of Education under this administration with DeVos, yes, we're doing some of Nash Action Network, others are doing it, but there seems to be no effort at all to really put into public education a serious effort to give people job skills given the technology of the day, which you really, in many ways, feeding into this mass of unemployable people. You're right. When we talk about job training, we can't just start after you get out of high school or after you get out of college. This is really pre-K, K-12. to It's going back to what we used to do very well in this country, which is vocational education. Starting uh, when kids are in high school, teaching them some skills. I mean, if you look at countries like Germany and Switzerland, they have a very robust system of apprenticeships where kids at age 16 start deciding what they want to do with their careers. So we need to invest in public education. It's not what Betsy DeVos and others want to do, which is basically gut our public schools and put money uh, elsewhere. All right, uh, Chris Lou, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to uh, stay in touch with you on a monthly basis. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. All right. And let me say again that as we deal with all these issues from health care, 1.8 million jobs will be lost if, if Obamacare is repealed. As we deal with automation, real jobs gone. When we deal with the whole police community uh, crises, when you look at Tulsa, when you look at uh, what just yeah, happened yeah, outside of Dallas, working. Texas, you're going to have more of young people Put in the streets the unemployable. We are on the precipice of a serious, serious, intractable uh, uh, crisis if we don't get our arms around it now. And I don't think enough of us are talking about the seriousness of where we are. You're talking about putting millions of people in health uh, uh, where, where they can't get health care or coverage. You're talking about having a situation where you're going to put almost two million people out of work if they can't. Uh, if they repeal the health care act and with automation making quick steps toward moving forward more and more the job market freezing up and many of us are running around talking about i don't know something gonna happen the something that you waiting to happen better be you and me getting organized and doing something about it. Let's take a break. No more guests. The rest of the show, you my guest. one 532 5797 one 532 5797 Twitter.com. The Rev Al. It's Hot Mud Monday. Let it out. Whatever your thoughts of the weekend, express yourself. Shout them. Keeping it real. Be right back.